Hey, hey, it's Shay Keister, and I'm your host and the founder of Casual Cattle Conversations, a global rancher education company that strives to bring honest thoughts and conversations from ranchers and leaders to other ranchers. Be sure to follow Cattle Convos on social media to have more in-depth conversations around the ranching business and lifestyle brought to you. If you are ready to take your operation to the next level and improve your lifestyle too, send me a message about my Rancher Mind group. Rancher Minds are monthly roundtable discussions for ranchers to learn from peers and experts and leave the call with actionable advice to make changes on their own operations. With that, let's see who our guest is today and what experience and advice they have to offer you to improve your own operation. All righty. Well, Andrea, thank you for joining me on the show today. It's exciting to visit with you one-on-one because you've been a part of the Rancher Mind calls. I've been following you quite a bit on social media for a few years now. So it's great to have you on here and I'm excited for you to share your story with my audience. Yeah, I'm excited. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So to kind of jump right in. I mean, we will be talking about, you know, mental and physical health um, because May is mental health month in addition to beef month. So, you know, it really ties together in a lot of ways, but to start off, do you just want to describe your background and involvement in the beef industry and really what that journey has looked like up to this point? Absolutely. So I am a fifth generation farmer in Southwest Minnesota. So I always find it kind of funny. Um, We call things differently here. Like if we call ourselves ranchers in my area, it's very strange for us, but other places it's a rancher farmer. So I'm a farmer. That's what we call ourselves in this area. Um, We have crops as well as the um, cow calf herd and a feedlot. So we are a part of the entire beef process and, you know, calving right now, we're finishing up a little bit. We have a couple of cows left, which that went crazy fast this year. And then those cows will stay with us all the way through until they're 1800 pounds ready to go to become, you know, meat and byproducts for the world. So in addition to that, we have the real crop side of it. I'm not super involved in that. My passion definitely sits with beef cattle, specifically anything to do with calves and the feedback process just like lights my soul on fire. Um, so backtracking a little bit, I grew up feeding bottle calves for a while. Like back in the day, we had Holstein bottle calves back when, you know, steers and that market was there. Um, Then we transitioned to fully beef probably when I was in like middle school, I would say. If you used to have or you still have um, um, Holstein, you'll understand exactly when that is. Um, So we've grown the herd a little bit since I graduated college. My original plan was to become a veterinarian. So things really shifted in 2018. I've been in your shoes um, where you're like graduating and you're like, I want to do this. But then, you know, you're kind of rolling with the punches and you're going through it. My last semester of college was an adventure and a roller coaster, especially with my mental health. And we'll get there. Um, So I got my denial letters from vet school. Decided not to um, actually go through my application the second year and found my place in the family farm and sharing my story and doing some content creation online, which is something I never saw coming. I didn't think this would like, you know, produce anything that I could support (laughs) myself and be a part of the family farm because my parents are not at the age that they're ready to, you know, switch over. They are early 50s. So the potential for me to just like take over was not there. Um, We are expanding, we're doing some exciting things and I have some, all of that coming, but um, my involvement with the beef industry now is being a beef producer myself all the way through my husband and I have a herd in addition to my parents. Um, And then I'm also active sharing my story of beef online. And there's nothing that lights my soul on fire more than sharing the truth of it. And with it being beef month, I have a lot of content coming through the, the funnel right now to share the truth of it, because there's a lot of people that, you know, consumers are disconnected and that's not the point of this conversation, but I've made it my mission to kind of bridge that gap and shed a light on what really happens in the beef industry and specifically what we do, because everyone does it differently, obviously. But and outside of that, I just really like cows and I could talk all day about it. Calving season is the best thing in the entire world. I'm a little sad it's almost over, but beef industry has my heart and will always have my heart. Well, I appreciate you bringing up the advocacy topic because while that is not the focus of our conversation today, it is important and it is a common theme for that to get brought up in a lot of my episodes and to talk about. And that's something I like to talk about too. So, you know, you touched on, um, you know, you've gone on your own mental health journey and I know from following your social media, I mean, your social media handle is that fit advocate, correct? Yes. So you're also physically active, physically healthy. So would you kind of open up and share your story a little bit on that realm? 
Absolutely. Um, so I was actually talking to somebody about this last night and this morning, different people. Um, I was never really that kid in high school that played sports. So I was a figure skater in Minnesota. We do those things, but it didn't involve like actually going to practices where you had to like be active. So I was the girl that would make every single appointment for like the doctor, the orthodontist, you know, eye doctor during gym class so I could skip it. So Andrea now likes working out a lot. Andrea back then it was pure punishment. It was not a way that I ever enjoyed like benefiting myself in that aspect. So to see me now, like at 25, working out at least five days a week, doing what I do, like baby Andrew would have been like, what are you? No way. That's not ever going to happen. Right. But I think a lot of it came down to figuring out it did benefit my mental health and that I was not doing the right types of fitness that I actually enjoyed. So I went to SDSU, good old hoodie got on. Um, and my first semester, I, you know, I wanted to be that girl that was active and had an outlet for stress because I was pre-vet. I was taking 21 credits because I, you know, thought it was a great idea back then. And they were all science classes and I was stressed out. So I started going to the gym a little bit um, back then. This was like 2015, way back in the day. Um, not that long ago, <laughs> but it feels forever ago. I was only doing like cardio and I didn't feel like it was serving me in any way other than, you know, I thought I was losing weight and feeling good and trying to be skinny because as a female, um, if you understand that, you understand it. And I realized that I was not doing any of this healthy living thing in any healthy way. I was cutting out red meat because I thought these influencers on social media, that's what they were saying you had to do. And I cut out dairy and I wasn't having cheese and I was eating like chicken and vegetables and that's it and rice. And I was seeing results, but I was also only eating a thousand calories. So my mental health tanked. I thought I looked good, but I felt like absolute garbage inside. And guess instead of like, you know, figuring it out and going back to the healthy outlets, I just completely stopped working out and I took a 180 in the opposite direction and went into partying and drinking and not taking care of myself because I didn't think I needed to. And I, I didn't know how to do it in a healthy, balanced way. It was all here or all over there. There was no middle for me. So first year of college, I lost myself a lot. Um, I was like, eating cookie dough by the bag at like 2 a.m. doing studying for exams and stuff. That was Andrea. And I found myself at the end of my first year in a not great mental health space. And I have anxiety very bad. My depression also creeps in when my anxiety gets out of control. So I was in a very dark place after my first year. And I was the person that wouldn't reach out for help. I didn't want someone's help to guide me on a health and fitness journey, but I didn't know what that looked like in a way that was actually sustainable for me because there's so many diets out there. There's all these quick fixes. And I thought cardio was the only answer, but like newsflash, I hate cardio. I don't want to do cardio. I don't want to run, even though I thought that's what you had to do. And I didn't want to give up beef because as a beef producer and someone who also was involved in the dairy industry growing up, like I look back at myself and just want to smack myself in the head a few times for giving that up for a month and a half. Um, it wasn't healthy. It wasn't sustainable. And I hated my life during it. So I started at home workouts and found my love for it. I started with like a dancing program. It was to country music. It was really lame back then, but I also, it helped me accountable because it was fun. And throughout that adventure of doing at-home workouts and having a community to lean into, I found my love of lifting really heavy weights. And I do this in my basement. It's kind of sketchy in an old farmhouse and it has served my mental health in so many ways with hard rock music. It's really weird and cringy, but lifting weights helps me feel better no matter what usually is going on. If I'm stressed out, if I'm anxious, and I found the correlation between not only the fitness piece, but also some of the other journaling things which we can talk about in my mental health. If I would, you know, go a couple of days without doing it and in a high stress season, I'd notice that I would snap a little bit quicker. My anxiety was on edge. I'd have a little panic attacks, all of that fun stuff. So I figured out this little correlation of, I don't hate lifting weights. It helps me feel better. And also like, it makes me feel really good at, as well. So it was kind of a roundabout way, but it wasn't like a, a smooth transition. I had a lot of bumps in the road to figure out what I enjoyed and how it benefited me because I always like saw people saying, oh, it'll help your mental health. Cardio wasn't because I dreaded doing it, but then I found like lifting heavy weights and that, that cures my everything almost. Well, that's awesome. And thank you for really opening up and sharing that. So you brought a lot to light there that we can kind of go on different avenues about, and we probably don't have a lot of time to hit all of that today. But one of the points I want to bring up and that you talked about was like, well, cardio 
helped other people's mental health, but it didn't help yours. Or you said, you know, I tried this, but it wasn't sustainable for me. So what are some ways people can kind of play around and figure out what they like, what is sustainable for them in that space? Because I mean, it's, I mean, physical health and mental health are tied together in a lot of different ways. So how can people kind of explore and figure out what is going to be a good option for them? So I think one thing that I wish I would have known back then, and I think it's a lot more of like out in the air now, is that movement is good for the soul no matter what it is, and that our bodies are made to move, which as farmers and ranchers, we all understand that like we move a lot. Um, We are pretty active as well, but that doesn't mean that like you also shouldn't take care of yourself if you live an active, busy lifestyle, because trust me, I get it, (laughs) Um, especially like with my parents, we have this conversation a lot. Um, but knowing that like any sort of movement is good for you. It doesn't have to be an hour long workout at the gym. It could be dancing in your tiny little apartment in college. If you really want to, maybe it's lifting heavy weights and maybe it's going for walks. Those little changes that you actually enjoy and can hold yourself accountable to, even if you have to have an accountability partner is huge. And it doesn't have to be these drastic changes and slow and steady wins the race. You're not going to see results as fast as you want to. If you actually like want to see physical results And doing two workouts or going for two walks in a row is not going to automatically change your mental health or any of your physical health. It's constant effort that is going to get you to your goals, whether that is physical or mental health wise. And I think a lot of the time, like back then, I thought it was going to be like a, oh, I'll do it for a week and everything will be cured. No, it takes a lot of time, um, but it doesn't have to be like a perfect journey whatsoever because I have not been perfect whatsoever. I live life a lot. Well, thank you for sharing that. And, you know, I really appreciate your point about that that last point, really. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're human and it's life. Life isn't perfect. You can't plan life out perfectly, but it's still being intentional, at least from my perspective, still being intentional about your health. Absolutely. And you have to enjoy it and you can't make yourself do something every single day. Like if you don't love working out, go do it three, four days a week or go for walks, whatever works for you. And it's, it looks different for everyone. And it really depends on your personality type because I really used to be a perfectionist and I kind of gravitated and grown to figure out that that didn't matter to me really. I was just trying to put that out there that I was like crushing it all the time when really I am a hot mess behind the scenes. So I've had that, you know, that balance of knowing your personality type and knowing what actually is serving you. That's awesome. So you brought up another good point about how farmers and ranch ranchers and agriculturists are busy, are out moving, but does that, is that necessarily always enough on the physical health side? Like how have you seen like being more intentional about your physical health impacting you when you work on your operation? Like how has that, how have those two worked together? I think it really, I mean, it depends. Like, so my husband is a farrier and he does not work out. And I think guys versus female, men versus females are a little bit different. Um, obviously with like muscle structure and hormones and such, but knowing like that I work out now, one, I used to have a lot of like knee issues and shoulder issues and back issues. So like lifting feed bags above my head or lifting something over a gate, calves over a gate or over the bunk was absolutely impossible for back for me back then versus now, like I don't know if I'm just like quick and in, I'm probably in shape, obviously compared to what I used to be, but climbing gates is a lot easier. If I need to get away from a crazy mama, um, pulling calves, doing anything that I do just seems so much easier than I remember it being even when I was in high school, which is almost kind of sad to think about. Cause I was like 16, 17 and now I'm like 25. Um, but just the daily things are unloading like 200 square bales used to be the death of me on a hot day. And now it's like, it sucks. Trust me. It sucks. But it's just another day. I don't, you know, um, so the physical piece of it has been huge, but also just how I respond to stressful situations, which is probably my favorite piece. I used to be, I have a temper. We'll put it that way. (laughs) Um, I get it from my dad, but little, little things would go wrong. And I would just like freak out. And now I have this like coping mechanism, whether it's taught me to just take a breather before I react, that piece has been huge. In addition to not only the physical piece of it. So let's, let's dive into that a little more, that coping mechanism, um, because in the ag lifestyle, so many things can feel like they're going wrong so quickly and it's, it's constant problem solving. So 
what is, you know, maybe your coping mechanism and what are maybe some other outlets people can use to adjust their mindset or just take a breath before reacting? I think a lot of it comes with time, just like your fitness journey. Um, I didn't just like instantly wake up and become a calmer person. It definitely has been years of working. I wish I could say that like I just magically changed. Um, and I still have those moments, obviously. But for me, lifting really heavy weights in my basement with hard rock music is the number one thing that I do. It helps me alleviate a lot of stress, anxiety. Um, and I try to do it at least four or five days a week. I also have kind of a morning routine or a routine that I do, even if it doesn't happen in the morning sometimes, is I journal my feelings. And it sounds super cliche, but I put it all on paper. If there is something that is bothering me or my husband annoyed me in the middle of the night or, you know, my dad said this or working cattle was an adventure, I put it on paper. Because sometimes when you actually get those thoughts out of your head that are bothering you and you put them on paper, you kind of release them in a sense. And then I kind of go back once in a while, I flip back to exactly a year ago, kind of like time hop um, or like Facebook memories. And I look at where I was at last year and those things that were really bothering me a year ago now don't seem so big or even a week ago. So that has been huge. And then I also, um, this is also really cliche, but I listen to a lot of podcasts about like mindset um, and read personal development books that helped me have different mechanisms to deal with things like that. Um, and it, I was like not a believer in personal development. I thought it was cliche and dumb because I was always reading like the fluffy things, like all affirmation based. And that's just not who I am. Like I need <laughs> the swear words and someone would basically like call me out on my crap. So that has served me a little bit, but the journaling, the fitness, um, taking time to unplug from social media and like have me time outside of like working out has been huge. And then the personal development altogether has been the magic sauce for me. That's awesome. So is gratitude a part of like your morning routine or daily routine? Is that something that's been effective for you? Yeah, I um, had to, I always did like the simple like affirmations. And then I realized that I needed more of like a goal based gratitude type of affirmation for me. So it had like intention behind it. So you know, affirmation wise, I go like, because I fill up my cup every single day, I'm a calmer person to work with my family. That's a really simple one that works for me. It puts action into it. And then I also list five to 10 things I'm grateful for every single day, whether it is a warm bed in the middle of January in negative 40 degree weather, or, you know, a mama cow deciding not to try to take me out that day, whatever it is. Um, it's also fun to go back and look at those things because it doesn't have to be giant things you're you know, you're grateful for. Everyone's grateful for their family and their friends, but those little moments also help you realize how truly blessed you are every single day. And those big, like little big things that happen that just drive you nuts, they seem to get a little bit smaller when you truly appreciate what good things are going on. Well, that's awesome. And thanks for sharing that. I know gratitude I started where like, I had like a planner and like it, you know, every morning or you had to write three things you were grateful for. And it's something that when I, when my temper creeps in, I start writing down some gratitudes and affirmations as well. And it does make a difference. And yes, it is the little things. Sometimes it's just the sun shining or the rain. If you need that. <laughs> right. Like the sun, like 60 degree weather when it's been like 40 and cold and yeah, that just the little things help you realize how truly amazing it is to do what we do. Yeah. So shifting gears a little bit and you've touched on this here and there. And I just kind of want to wrap it up into maybe one question or one summary. But when we look at maybe, and I don't like saying typical farmer or rancher because we're all so different and unique, but I just have this image of, you know, my father or grandfather out there working or my mother or sister, you know, in these busy lifestyles, what are some of those first steps that may be easier to implement on the mental and physical health side? when we look at actions that can be taken that, you know, aren't going to feel like they're taking too much time out of their day. Cause sometimes it is the simple things that make a difference. Right. I think a little bit of it that I always try to remind, like when I talk to the neighbors about this or my parents or family and, you know, close people, um, I always like suggest to one water intake. I know it sounds super cliche as well, but it does a lot for you and it'll help you feel better. Your energy will also improve. You'll get more steps in because you have to go to the bathroom more often as well, which is never going to hurt anybody. Um, and then in regards to nutrition, just a little hit on this. Um, if you just incorporate some vegetables in your meals, I know in the Midwest, like my parents are very like steak and potatoes and that's what we would have. 
If you also include some vegetables in that, I promise you'll feel a little better and it'll, you know, start the little process. And it's not anything crazy, simple stuff. Um, but even if it's, you know, going for an evening walk, I know we're all tired. It's, it doesn't sound like it's a lot of fun, but it can also be time you can spend with your spouse or with uh, a relative that you have. Maybe it's 20 minutes. Little things like that can really compound. And if you want to go into like a full on workout program or something, that's totally up to you. But little changes can truly make the difference. So you can start there as well as like that gratitude piece. It sounds super cliche, I know. But when you take a step back and truly realize like this is all I have going on and these things are amazing, your mindset will slowly shift with time. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take weeks, months of doing it. And you're going to feel silly. I promise I feel silly sometimes too. I'm like, I'm so grateful for this. When you take a step back, your mindset is going to automatically shift more and more to being a little more positive instead of focusing on the negative things that are really bothering you that really aren't usually that big of a deal. And we live a very high stress life. So if there's any way that you can reduce a little bit of stress, I promise it'll be better <laughs> in the end, even if it's a little bit of action to get there. Well, I think that's great. And especially how you brought up that those small challenge or those small habits can make big changes overall in your lifestyle in the end. Right. It doesn't take the crazy things. So how have you stayed accountable on your health journey, because it can be very up and down. You've mentioned you're not perfect, but ultimately, how do you stay accountable so that you can go to bed at night and say, well, in the big picture, I'm still taking care of myself. So I have an online community that I do check into with, um, I was a health and fitness coach for a while. Um, still have some clients in there and such that I lead into because they're there with me. They're in the trenches. Um, and then I am actually creating a free community as well to have anyone in there that is on a health and fitness journey, whether that is just moving and, you know, trying to hit 10,000 steps a day, or you're doing, you're going to the gym, you're doing, you know, 75 hard, whatever it is, because sometimes we all need just a little bit of a community to check into. And I also have some really good friends that are on the journey with me. So sometimes we get on zoom together and we do our workouts together, or we, you know, do a little Saturday morning chat for 30 minutes while we drink our pre-workout or eat breakfast or whatever it is, and then go sweat. That has been huge, but also making my goals attainable in a way that brings me joy has made sticking, you know, staying accountable to everything so much easier because I enjoy my workouts. I know they're helping my, men my mental health. And then I also share it on social media because I know, you know, sometimes it took me watching XYZ person go get their workout in to go get my workout in or to go for a walk, right? Those little things that are like a little bit of peer pressure kind of benefited me back in the day. <laughs> so I share that journey. But I mean, I'm six years in now. So for me, showing up daily, it's it's a habit. It's not easy. Usually sometimes I'm not motivated at all, but it's a habit that I've built. So if you can, you know, set that goal to crush five workouts a week for 21 days. And then you do that and then you go for six weeks and then you go for 10 weeks or whatever it is and give yourself grace along the way that will, that'll hold you accountable. Well, that's awesome. So shifting to the mental health side, how has that impacted, how has all this impacted how you're able to work better and communicate with your family? Because communicating with family presents its challenges. It can straight up suck. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm sure my parents would say the same about communicating with me a lot of days. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so I've noticed like I get on edge if I have not filled up my cup that day, whether that is, you know, my workout or just my me time and during certain seasons. So like cabin season gets a little more high strung. Um, I always just make sure I take a step back before I kind of say things because I used to be the high strung person that would just let everything fly out of her mouth. So for some reason, having the piece of my fitness journey that I could control has helped me put all these emotions into a workout. There's a lot of times that I get mad. I like drop all kinds of angry words during my workouts. I cry sometimes because I just have to let my emotions out in that time to the point that I'm usually okay when I'm at the farm. Um, but I'm not afraid to tell someone like I need to take a second to just like gather my thoughts um, or like stop a situation before it happens because prevention is key for me and a lot of things. So, if, you know, cattle are getting wound up. Usually I'd be like, Hey, we need to just take a chance to just everyone chill out. Um, and nobody, you know, blows up at them. But usually if I am on top of taking care of myself and filling up my own cup, 
I don't have those outbursts as long as I'm also getting enough sleep, which can be a challenge in some seasons, but just filling up my own cup mainly and reminding myself to breathe has been more than anything. Well, outstanding. I really appreciate how vulnerable you've been and honest and sharing your journey and your advice. As we wrap up, do you have any last comments or thoughts you'd like to share with my audience? I just want to say one thing is if you feel like you need to make some sort of change, start small and start with what works for you and your lifestyle. It doesn't have to be what what I do or what some fancy fitness influencer does or who, what you see any, anyone else do, whatever you feel like you can stick to and build those habits that you can stack onto, whether it is, you know, maybe you're going for walks for a while. And then next month you want to try going, you know, lifting weights or doing something else. If you start building the foundation with things that are super simple and then build from there, your journey is going to be a lot more fun and it doesn't have to go X, Y, Z. You don't have to lift weights. You don't have to do crazy things. Just start somewhere and make sure it's sustainable for you long-term because you don't want to, you know, get two months in and say, Hey, I can't do this anymore at all. And then you're back to ground zero. I think a lot of people do that to themselves and it's hard to figure that out, but find something that works for you and have some sort of system that holds you accountable, whether it is a best friend or a coworker or your family, maybe not your family. If you work with your family, cause that gets to be a little much, um, but find someone or something that holds you accountable and you find joy in the journey. Cause that's really the secret sauce. Well, thank you very much. And that's a wrap on that one. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on the episode. And if you have any further questions around the topic, take care and have a great day.